Cookbook.com, and today we're going to continue talking about how to make a synthesizer out of just the simpler and some found sounds, uh, any any sounds that you have lying around. So um, what we did in the last two posts is show how to make a simple oscillator out of any um, any sound whatsoever. And so for our sound, we use a field recording of a stream, and then the um, the post after that, we talked about how to double it to make them, to beef it up and make it sound a little bit more complex. So here um, you'll see, let me just play this for you. So it's a little bit more complicated than just one oscillator. And right now I want to talk about basically how to use macros to um, map some modulation into these sounds and modulate them separately actually to make the sound even more complex and a little bit more flexible. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this oscillator and um, I'm just going to do this on one track right now, or one of these oscillators rather, but you could repeat this procedure with both. We're going to take one oscillator and we're going to make an instrument rack out of this. And the reason we're going to do this is now we're going to have a whole bunch of macros that are just going to um, work with this oscillator. and um, you can actually use this um, do map these directly these modulations that we're talking about, which are going to be the attack, decay, sustain, and release. You can actually uh, map these directly to a MIDI controller if you'd like. But I have a couple of reasons why I like to use macro controls. The first one here, and actually the way that you would do this if you did want to do this, is just um, press Command M, and then you could just select the control you want to modulate, and then uh, turn a knob on your MIDI controller, and it'll map to that. Um, and the reason that I don't like to map it straight to these, but I like to use the macros kind of as an intermediary, is that I like, uh, if you use the macros, you can edit the range of the, of the controls. So instead of um, a control going from 0 to, what does this go, from 0 to 20 seconds, I can make it so the range only goes half of that, let's say. And this can be useful sometimes, especially if you're um, using a controller live, um, and you, you only use, let's say, parameters within a certain range, you can go ahead and set the macro to only work in that range, and that way you don't have to worry about um, uh, bumping a knob and it turning it, it turning the value totally out of the range of, of what sounds any good. And the other reason that I like to use the, the macro is that you can actually map two two of these separate, two separate controls inside of the simpler, you can map to one macro. So that when you turn this, it controls two separate um, parameters. And that'll come in useful in just a second. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to map these attack, decay, sustain, and release, which are gonna be the amplifier envelopes, or the volume envelopes, rather, um, of this, of this uh, oscillator. So I'm gonna do that, map those to these macros right here. And how I'm gonna do that is just press map mode, select the parameter, select one out here, bam, 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 and bam. Okay, so you can see that the map mode functions very similar to a, um, very similar to the MIDI map mode or the key map mode. Basically you just select the parameter you want to um, control first and then you select the the uh, the knob where you turn the knob in the case of MIDI mapping, um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But what you should notice, of course, is that when you re when you map them, it goes back to zero, which is kind of a pain. You don't necessarily want that. So if you play it, let's say you map it, then you play it, and you're like, oh, it doesn't sound like anything. It's probably because it sets them back to zero. And if you want to sa save these values, you can always just save this instrument rack. So I could just press this little floppy disk thing, and I'll call this oscillator one. Oh. It's just an awesome one because I can't spell. All right, and so that will be there whenever I want to use it, and it'll save these values as well. So you can see already. By setting the... Uh, by uh, setting the the envelope values uh, differently for the two different oscillators, you do get a little bit more of a complex sound. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna map the filter controls to these uh, these bottom four macros. And the filter controls are just really important in general. It's gonna help shape the sound quite a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. And so the most obvious ones are gonna be resonance and frequency. So there we go. And then the next one that I'm gonna use is sometimes I'm gonna want an LFO to um, 
to map to this filter. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose in here where it says rate, where it says beats down here, I'm gonna choose that. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna control the rate of the LFO that's going to rhythmically open and close the filter. Now, this is where, and so remember this applies for this as well, these default values are gonna go back to zero, so you're gonna have to change them probably. Now this is where, let's say this again, um, um, and this is where something cool happens. So let's say for this last macro, macro five, I want to map the LFO amount right here. And what that basically means is this control controls how much the LFO, which is going to open and close rhythmically, like a sine wave, just up and down, um, how much that controls the filter. So if it's down at zero, it's not going to affect it whatsoever. And if it's up at 24, it's going to be the maximum amount that it can control it. I don't really know what that 24 refers to. Um, but the good thing about this is like, let's say you can have it, um, you can have it so that the LFO controls the filter a little bit or none or all the way up. So I'm going to map that to this last macro right here. But also, I want it so that as soon as I turn this on, as soon as I, as soon as this goes past zero, I want the filter to turn on. Otherwise, when this is all the way down, I want it to be off. And the thing is, is this way, I can kill two birds in one stone. That way I don't have to have a separate knob or a separate button to turn on the filter and then a separate button to, or a separate knob to turn up the LFO amount. And the reason this is important is because basically when the LFO amount is zero, um, I'm not, it's basically like I'm not going to be using the, the filter at all. So I want this to be, to kill two birds on one stone. And this is what you can do with the map mode, which is great. So all you have to do is, so I've selected it right here. You select a separate parameter and then map it again. So now I'm going to unmap it. And you'll notice when this is zero, this number right here is going up. And as it hits 50%, then the filter will turn on. But the problem is that's not exactly what I wanted, right? I wanted it to be as soon as I even touch this macro, I want this filter to go on. So this is where the range editing comes in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit map mode again. And you'll see up here that the, um, in the browser, all of the, per, all of the ranges of the macros come up. And so if I look at this, I can see what's going on here. So filter on, the range is going to be from 64 to 127, meaning basically from halfway up to all the way up. And that's going to be when the filter's on. So basically what I want this to do is go from 1 to 127. So the only time that it's off is when the value is 0. And remember that all MIDI values go from 0 to 127. So now that I've set that mapping, I can exit this and look at what happens now. So now the, it's all the way down. When I even go up a little bit, suddenly the filter's on. And then the LFO continues to go up, right? So if you listen to And so now I'm able to map these entirely differently for the two different oscillators. So I would repeat the procedure with this other oscillator. And then I'd basically have all these different controls that would allow me a really extensive amount of sound just out of these two oscillators. Um, so that's why I think that you should use the, think about using the macros within your instrument rack, especially when you're making a synthesizer like this, because then you'll be able to control more um, more than one parameter at the same time instead of having, let's say, two knobs on a MIDI controller doing these things or a knob and a button. So that way you can make the most out of the controllers that you do have. Okay, so hopefully that was useful and I will talk to you soon. If you have any questions, um, you can actually sign up for the Ableton Cookbook email list and we're going to be having a twice monthly Q&A video. So um, go ahead and sign up for that. Send me your questions and I will address them in a video just for the, uh, just for the email list, okay?